Hey there, this is Vineet from Bioinformatica. In this video, we are going to discuss about the global sequence alignment and the working of the Needleman Unz algorithm. We will also learn how to align two sequences globally. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, in bioinformatics, we generally deal with two types of sequences, mainly DNA or RNA, which are nothing but the sequences of nucleotide bases, and proteins, which are sequences of amino acids. Now, why do we perform sequence alignment? In simple words, we can say sequence alignment is the most efficient and simple way to determine the functional relationships, the structural relationships, and the evolutionary relationship between the sequences. You can learn more about the sequences and alignment techniques by watching our previous videos by clicking on this i button. And you can also watch it by clicking on the link given in the description below. We can broadly divide the alignment methods into two types that are the global alignment and the local alignment. Here we are discussing some of the features of the global and local alignment. The global alignment tries to align the entire sequences with each other, while the local alignment only aligns these regions having the highest similarities. The global alignment aligns all letters from the query sequences and the target sequence, while the local alignment aligns substring of the target sequence with substring of the query sequence. So, the global alignment is more suitable for close related sequences, while the local alignment is more suitable for divergent or distantly related sequences. The most common global alignment algorithm is Nidelman and Unz and the commonly used local alignment algorithm is Smith-Waterman algorithm. In this video, we are going to study about global alignment. Hopefully, you have watched our previous videos on sequence alignment and have some basic knowledge about the scoring matrices and about the rewards and penalties. Overly, the Needleman Unz and Smith Waterman algorithms are based on dynamic programming. In dynamic programming, we take a large complicated problem, then break the problem into smaller and simpler subproblems which are relatively much easier to solve. Then again, derive the required optimal solution from the solutions of those sub-problems. Required steps in the dynamic programming. All dynamic programming algorithms, including Nidelman Unz, follow some general steps that are initialization, matrix spelling, and traceback. In this video, we are going to align two sequences manually using Nidelman Unz algorithm. We have also a step by step video tutorial on how to create Nidelman Unz algorithm for global sequence alignment using Python. If you are interested in programming, make sure to check that video by clicking on this i button for a better understanding of this algorithm. The link to the video is also given in the description below. So, here we are aligning two sequences. The first sequence is A. T, G, C, T and the second sequence is A, G, C, T. At first, we will create a matrix of n plus 1 into m plus 1 size, where m is the length of the first sequence and 1 is for the first blank column and n is the length of the second sequence and the 1 is for the first row. After creating the blank matrix, now we are ready for the first step that is the initialization step. In the initialization step, we will fill the first row and the first column with progressive gap penalties. That is, we start with zero and as we proceed rightwards in the row, we will be adding gap penalties in each step. So when we move from zero to A, we will have a gap penalty added to zero. So the value become minus two after the addition. Again, moving from A to T, the value become minus 4. Then it is become minus 6, minus 8 and minus 10 and so on. You get the point. So, similarly we will fill the first column. 
also again starting from 0 and all the way up to t. Now our initialization step is completed and we are now ready for the matrix filling step. So now we will assign the value to the green box. To assign the value to the green box, we will first take the value from the left neighbor, that is minus 2. As we know, for any vertical or horizontal movement, we will be adding gap penalties to it. In this case, the gap penalty is minus 2. So the value become minus 4 after the addition. Let us keep the value noted. After that, we will take the value from the upper neighbor, that is minus 2. And again, for the vertical movement, we will add the gap penalty to it. So the value again become minus 4 after the addition. After noting the value, now we are going to take the value from the diagonal neighbor, that is 0. We know from the previous videos that for diagonal movement, we may have either matching reward or mismatching penalty. To check this, we will compare the letters in the two sequences that corresponds to the box. In this case, this is A and A. So it is a match. And we will add the matching reward to the value of the diagonal neighbor. So we will get 1. Now we have to take the maximum value among these three values. Here in this case it is 1. So we will put 1 in the green box. After that we will proceed to the next box. Now we will repeat the steps that we have implemented on this last box. So again we take the value from the left neighbor that is 1 and add gap penalty to it. So we will get minus 1. Then we will also take the upper neighbor and add the gap penalty to it as well. So it will become minus 6. Again, as in the last box, we will take the value from the diagonal box. Now check if the corresponding letters are same or not. In this case, these letters are A and T. So this is a mismatch. So we will be adding mismatch penalty to the value and the value will become minus 3. Among minus 1, minus 3 and minus 6, minus 1 is larger. So we will take minus 1 and add it to the green box. I think you get the point. The video will be too long if I fill every box one by one. So try to fill the matrix by yourself by using the steps we have discussed and check if you can fill the matrix correctly or not. After filling the matrix now we can proceed to the next step that is the traceback. We will begin the traceback step from the right bottom corner of the matrix where the highest value lies and continue tracing back up to the upper left corner from where we have started the matrix filling process. It is a relatively simpler process. We just have to trace the arrows back which lead us to the end corner. There is also a less time consuming trick which works fine as well. If the letters corresponding to the box are same, the traceback will go diagonally. If the letters are not matched, the traceback will go towards the highest valued neighbor. In the first box, the corresponding letters are matched, so it will go diagonally. For the second and third box, the letters are not matched, so the traceback will go towards the highest neighbor. So let's start the traceback. We will start from the right bottom corner. The corresponding letters are T and T, so it is a match. So the arrow will go diagonally. Here the corresponding letters are C and C, so it will go diagonally again. Here we got G and G, that is a match. So the arrow will go diagonally again. But now we got the corresponding letters that are T and A. So it is a mismatch. So we have to look for the highest valued neighbor. Here the neighbors are 1 minus 2 and minus 4. Among these three, one have the highest value. So we will discard the remaining two and the traceback will proceed towards one. 
here again we got a match that is a and a so the traceback will go diagonally this is where most of the students get confused for writing the alignment we have to consider only the arrows not the values it is a good practice to write the aligned sequences from right to left so now understand how to recognize the match mismatch and gap a diagonal traceback arrow from the higher value to lower value is a match if the arrow is from lower value to higher value or from same value to same value it will be a mismatch and the most obvious one if the traceback arrow is vertical or horizontal that will be a gap so finally these are our aligned sequences hope this video helped you to learn something here are some example sequences that you can try yourself it would be great if you post your results in the comment section below as mentioned earlier you can also watch the video on how to create a python program to solve the global alignment problem using nidelman uns algorithm any like comment share and subscription would be highly appreciated it will motivate us to create more interesting videos this is vinith and you are watching bioinformatica and as always thanks for watching